Hey guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach, and in today's video, we're talking about six reasons why your dog isn't listening when you ask him to stay. So six things that you're doing that is absolutely ruining the stay cue for your dog. Stick with me. We're going to get right into it. All right, guys, no fluff. Let's get right into this video. The number one reason your dog is you're blowing the stay cue for your dog is because you never taught your dog any sort of patience. Before we ever train a stay cue, we want to reward patience in your dog. It's so much easier to teach our dog something when we reward the good things versus waiting for something bad to happen or for them to get it wrong and trying to correct it. That's so much harder for your dog to learn. So rewarding the behavior you want in your dog is the very first thing I like to teach any client. So if your dog is doing good and being patient, especially without you having to ask, if this is just something he's naturally doing, reward it. So when you get to teaching the stay cue to your dog, your dog already has a bit of an understanding of patience. For instance, if you have been teaching your dog to sit or lie down and they can actually maintain that without popping right back up, that's patience, right? We want to reward that in our dogs. The longer they can maintain a behavior or an action, the better, right? So reward that, reward duration with your dog before you move on to anything else. So th that's why the beginner dog training series is so incredibly important because we talk about duration and we talk about th the three D's of dog training duration duration being the one that is very key here the number two reason you are absolutely ruining your dog's stay cue is because you are impatient you're you're having your dog stay and then getting them right back up this is confusing them so give them a chance to to be in that stay to learn what stay actually means because stay isn't sit your dog can sit and get right back up and they've accomplished that sit, right? But staying is, is all about the patience, right? It's all about being calm in that action, in that behavior. So having your dog immediately get up and do something else is ruining your dog's stay. I, I talk so much about patience in my online dog training program. If you haven't checked it out, it is linked down below. But if you're not, even if you're not quite ready for the full online course, I have an ebook and it goes over my seven canine commandments, which I call the seven miracle steps. You can get your copy of the ebook super inexpensive. The link is in the, it's actually in my link tree. So definitely check that out in the description because I go into all seven canine commandments, but patience is one of those. And it is so incredibly important to really master, not just patience for your dog, but patience for yourself. And that's the second way you're ruining your dog's stay cue is by being impatient. Kind of continuing on that path, the third reason you're ruining your dog's stay cue is because you're calling him out of the stay, like quickly, right? So again, keep him in the stay or her, my apologies, in the stay and, and have a little bit of patience. This is something you have to work on with yourself before you can expect your dog. If you don't have patience, your dog isn't gonna have patience. I'm gonna say that. But let your dog be in the moment, be like acutely aware of the behavior that is getting him or her the reward for the stay cue. Don't immediately call them out. And if you see your dog about to get up, a lot of people I've noticed will actually, if they see their dog about to get up out of a stay cue, they'll go ahead and call their dog to come over to them thinking that, okay, I've just called my dog to come to me, so that was a good thing. No, actually, your dog got up out of the stay cue and you just made an excuse for why the stay cue was broken. So let's try not to do that. It's totally okay. I, don't, I mean, dogs, there, there's a learning process for your dog. There's a learning process for you. There's a learning process for, I mean, I know I've, I've had to learn it too, right? Let your dog be in the stay. And if they break the stay, that's okay. No big deal. Wash our hands, calm down, try it again. And here's the thing. If your dog is, you know, you, you, you notice them about to get up out of the stay. The, the thing you could do is give him a, uh, 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 you know, something like that to where he knows you want him to stay. Dogs are absolutely incredible at anticipating what they think we want. So if you get to the point where your dog is breaking the stay, 
and you're making an excuse and calling him to come back to you thinking that you're going to reward him for coming to you. You're actually rewarding him breaking this day, but also that is what you're training your dog to do. You're training your dog to break this day. You're training your dog to expect that you want him to break this day. So there, there's so many levels. Your dog is doing what he thinks you want him to do. If it's not actually what you want him to do, don't reward it. All right, the number four reason that you are ruining your dog's stay cue is that you're talking to your dog the whole time. They're in a stay cue. It's okay, like silence is okay. So many people I know are very uncomfortable in silence. And I have to say, I'm not, for the most part, I am not uncomfortable in silence. The only time, like, a lot of people around me are very uncomfortable in silence and then that makes me uncomfortable. But me in general, I'm totally not uncomfortable in silence, which is a good thing when it comes to dog training. But it's like, why are we so uncomfortable with being, si I don't know. Continuing to interact with your dog when they are in a stay cue, when they're trying to hold a stay, when you're trying to teach them patience, when you're trying to teach yourself patience, continuing to talk is really gonna confuse your dog because you're confused. Like you aren't comfortable in the silence. So you're making your dog uncomfortable in the stay. So really get comfortable with the silence. It's okay. You don't have to talk to your dog the whole time. Let them, let them just live in the stay queue for a little while. And I'm not saying for hours, but like, you know, for a, a little bit of time, we're going to work up to a minute, hopefully, maybe two minutes, maybe three minutes, right? That would be great if your dog could maintain a stay cue for a few minutes. Let's get comfortable in the silence and not constantly talk to our dogs, confusing them in their stay cue. I hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> All right, number five, the number five reason, guys, we only have one more after this. The number five reason that you're ruining your dog's stay cue is because you are not confident. Again, going back to the seven canine commandments, um, the link to the seven miracle steps ebook is in my link tree, which you can find in the description. Super inexpensive. I highly recommend it for any pet parent, regardless of what stage you're at. If you have a puppy, if you have an older dog, if you are have been working on dog training for a while if you haven't been working on dog training at all regardless of whatever stage of life you are at i definitely recommend the book for every pet parent out there not just because i wrote it like i get that i'm biased but because it really has some great grounding information that we need reminders like we really need these reminders in our lives unless you are a zen master you need these reminders so check it out but here's the deal if you're not confident so if you go into the queue and you ask your dog to stay and you know you feel in in your heart in your brain probably in your brain i don't know one of those right if you feel like you're going into that stay and you have and you just know your dog is not going to be able to maintain the stay guess what they're not going to do it just like i tell people if if you start walking your dog right and you just know your dog is going to pull in the leash guess what they're going to because you are preempting that your emotions are transferring to your dog and you have to be able to visualize and believe that your dog is going to maintain that stay you have to be able to visualize and believe that your dog is not going to pull on the leash this time is different right believe that in your heart and those emotions will transfer your to your dog now maybe maybe they won't be able to maintain that stay but you still have to believe that this next time is going to be the time and that is going to make all the difference i promise you give it a try and we've made it the number six reason before i tell you the number six reason make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you look down there at that subscribe button and it's red go ahead and click it and turn it gray make sure you are subscribed to my channel and if you know anybody in your life who needs help with their dog please share this channel my goal this year is to get to into 2021 my goal is to get to 25,000 subscribers on this channel and i cannot do it without your help thank you so much in advance because i know you're going to share it with everyone you know okay so the number six reason why you are ruining your dog's stay command is again back to patience guys you're not working it long enough you're not letting your dog live in the stay queue long enough you know what? We start with a second. We start with one to two seconds and then we work up to three seconds and then we work up to four seconds. So it starts small, but it can 
quickly is if you're doing it right, you can quickly get your dog to stay for longer periods of time. And you need to be working on that duration with your dog. It is so important. It is a stuff you should not be missing. And you know, if you've never worked with your dog and if you haven't maintained that training and continued, and, and you know what? Training isn't something you do once and it lasts forever. We need to continually do training through o over time in different places. Like, right, you know, we're getting ready to move to a new home and I fully expect that my dog is going to be a little bit confused because dogs are very situational. So we're, while we do work on training here and there, I know we're gonna have to do a big push again when we move because it's a totally different situation for my dog. All the situations are different, right? Everything is different. The neighborhood is different. The house is gonna be different. Everything, the, the sights, the smells, the emotions are all gonna be different. So I'm gonna have to work with her quite a bit and that's okay, I fully understand that. But we have to work on duration, right? regardless of if we work on it now, if we work on it next year, if we work on it the year after that, right? We're gonna to continue to have to work on duration. And if you never work with your dog on maintaining that stay, if we're not adding you know, seconds onto the clock as we train, then you can't expect your dog to be able to maintain a stay for an extended period of time when you haven't taught them that. And while we don't want to have to continue to give our dogs treats forever and ever and ever, amen, right? We do have to intermittently reward. We do, we start out with a lot of rewards and we slowly taper off the rewards, right? So we randomize it, but we still need to intermittently reward because what good is a behavior? Why do we want our dogs to continue doing a behavior if they have stopped receiving rewards for it? It just doesn't work that way. So we need to, continue with the duration and continue rewarding intermittently. As always, you get out what you put in, and this goes with everything, with what we feed our dog, with how we train our dog, you get out what you put in. You have to put in the effort. You have to put in the time and energy, the positivity, so that you get all of that back from your dog. I hope these six tips were helpful for you. I Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button, and I hope you leave a comment below to let me know if this video helped you. Also, if you have any requests for other videos, I would love to know. Oh, really quickly, make sure that you are also following me on Patreon. I post all new and exclusive content over on Patreon that you don't get anywhere else, and as a cat parent, I know this is the kind of content that you want and need. So check the link in the description for my Patreon. I hope to see you over there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Until then, bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.